I'll try to create uh, a series of uh, videos basically focusing on data communications and networks and we'll try to understand this subject using practicals and one of the softwares which is predominantly used for data communication networks practicals is Wireshark. So in this first session uh, what we'll try to do is we'll try to get a feel of this Wireshark software. Looking at the contents in this video, so first we will look at the uh, basics about or introduction about the Wireshark, then the block diagram of it and the graphical user interface that the Wireshark provides and we will also look, uh, we will have a demo of Wireshark, basically some of the basic features. So about Wireshark, Wireshark is a open source software and it is available at this uh, URL and uh, it's very widely used primarily for network protocol uh, analysis and uh, what it does is it captures the uh, data in the network and it helps us to get uh, the details of the packet at a microscopic level in fact even in the packet contents bits also we can have a look at it and then that will help us in doing a inspection deep inspection of various protocols that will be used on the network for network communication between our machines and remote machines and this software runs on multiple platforms it is available for windows linux mac os and likewise lots of other operating systems as well apart from that uh, the data network data that is captured by wireshark it provides a nice uh, graphical user interface that will be seeing shortly and it allows us to filter the various packets uh, that are captured based on different criteria. It gives a very powerful filter criteria. We'll see them shortly. And of course, it has the capability of reading the data, live data, from various types of interfaces like uh, Ethernet or the Wi-Fi uh, network or network interfaces. Likewise, lots of other interface capabilities also it provides. Now, looking at the block diagram, yeah, here's a picture of uh, a, a host. It could be a laptop or a desktop, which is connected, or which is connected on the network, which is on the network. And Wireshark is primarily installed on these hosts. So, looking at this host, the block diagram here, uh, what it represents is every host has an operating system and it has an application. Uh, in the operating system, it has the capabilities to communicate over network so like it has physical layer like your ethernet or uh, your wi-fi capabilities the corresponding link layer network layer and the transport layer tcp ap stack what wireshark does is this is the portion that is uh, that depicts wireshark so wireshark basically captures the ethernet frames in this case it is ethernet uh, it captures all the Ethernet frames going out of the system and likewise coming into the system it makes a copy of them it has a packet capture and then it has a nice user interface graphical user interface in which it lists all those packets for us to analyze them have a look at them yeah this is the graphical user interface that Wireshark provides this is a window we'll see it, see it practically shortly so primarily on the top, like any other uh, graphical user interfaces, it will have command menus, so various commands that we can execute. Then it has uh, three panes. This is one pane, pane one. Then this is another pane, pane two, and this is another th pane, pane three. So first pane, it lists all the packets one after the other that it has captured. So each row corresponds to a packet that has been captured. And then whichever packet is highlighted over here so you click on that particular row that is highlighted and the details of the packet or the header details of the packets are listed in the second pane so this second pane lists the header details of the packet selected here so likewise the third pane this the last pane whatever packet has been selected here the contents of it hexadecimal contents of it are listed in the third pane the complete contents from 00th location till the end of the packet frame and of course it also tries to interpret the ascii uh, corresponding ascii these characteristics 
or the characters corresponding to these hexadecimal values and it tries to display the ASCII values also, we have ASCII characters also we have. Now let's get into uh, the practical. Let's have a look at Wireshark. So like we said, Wireshark can be installed on any of the operating systems. So I have a, a Windows uh, version here. So let me just zoom in. Yeah, I have a Windows machine. I have logged into a Windows machine, remotely logged into a Windows machine. So the way to start the Wireshark is we just, yeah, we can type Wireshark in the, the uh, search window. Yeah, we have got Wireshark here. Just click on it and you can see Wireshark window comes up. So when the Wireshark window comes up, you can see uh, the various live or various interfaces that are there uh, that the Wireshark has detected on my machine over here or on my laptop that I am remotely connected to. So for example, you can see that uh, Ethernet, right now the laptop is not connected over Ethernet. It has also detected that it also has Wi-Fi capability. And interestingly, you can see that uh, whichever is active, you can see an animation waveform like this. So Wi-Fi is active on my laptop. So I uh, selected, I double click on it. So when I double click on it, now you can see the main window of uh, Wireshark has come up that we had seen uh, the screenshot of it. So like we had said, these uh, portions are for the commands, so various commands that the user can select and execute. And then this pane is the place where uh, packets are continuously, whatever are being captured, they are being displayed. So you can see they are continuously scrolling one after the other because the network is live. And then uh, this pane we said, whichever packet is selected, we'll come to it shortly. The headers of that packet are listed here and the hexadecimal values corresponding to that packet are listed here. So one thing we should do is, we should also, uh, these are the two things. So right now this is uh, capturing, continuously capturing. So this is the button to use to stop the capture. So that whatever has captured are displayed here. And we can do an analysis, offline analysis of the packets that are captured. So before that, what we'll do is, uh, we'll try to generate the data uh, that we are interested in. So for example, to generate the network data or the network traffic, let me open the browser. Let me visit some HTTP site. Uh, let's say I want to visit my the organization site. I work for MGIT, so I'm typing mgit.ac.in. So before hitting the enter button, what I'll do is, I will start the capture of packets here in Wireshark. So let's go back here. Let me start it now. Uh, continue without saving. And uh, here's a very powerful, like in the introduction we said, there is a powerful display filter. So since there are so many packets of different protocols being captured over here, you can see different protocols. So right now we are about to generate HTTP traffic. So I'll set a filter called as HTTP. So I type HTTP and you can see that uh, that area has turned green indicating that that is a valid filter. So I hit enter. So now uh, I have forced it to display only the packets which are of type HTTP. So now let's go back and let's generate some HTTP traffic. So I open the browser. I have the URL ready. I hit enter. So now we can see the page has come up in the browser. And simultaneously, we can also see in the background that there are lots of packets that have been captured uh, by Wireshark. So now let's go back to Wireshark. And uh, first thing is let's stop the capture because we want to do a offline analysis. So lots of packets corresponding to HTTP has been captured here. HTTP protocol have been captured here. So you can see, for example, you uh, select any of those packets. There are lots of fields corresponding to the packet. So you can see that the source is from this IP and this packet has gone to this IP destination and is of type uh, HTTP protocol. And uh, in brief, what was that about? What was that packet about? So when we select this packet, so we can also see the headers corresponding to that uh, uh, packet or frame. It has uh, lots of uh, headers in it. It has HTTP header, TCP, further header in it, and likewise IP, Ethernet, and all those details are there. So you can select any of them, and uh, you, you can see in the third pane, uh, the, the pane below, 
So it is showing which is the portion. For example, I clicked on TCP. So it is showing the portion of the TCP header uh, in the frame below. So it is showing that it is starting from FF to 00. Those are the hexadecimal contents inside that TCP header. So likewise, if you select IP, uh, inside that frame, it is showing which are the portions, which, which are the hexadecimal values that are corresponding to the IP header. So likewise, Ethernet also, you can see the header. So third pane is displaying all those details. It is showing which portion is Ethernet, which portion is IP header, which portion is TP, TCP header, which portion is HTTP header. Right. So this is what uh, the three panes are about. So now let's look at the content also. Let's look at uh, what are the other uh, data that it is carrying. So for example, to analyze that, let's pick up a packet which has some good content in it. So let me, uh, like I said before, the display filter is a very powerful utility, powerful place in Wireshark where we can uh, filter uh, the packets that are of interest to us. For example, HTTP response. So these filters, uh, as we go along in the subsequent videos, we'll also keep seeing uh, what are different filters that can be used. So right now I'm saying, filter, get me all those HTTP packets, which are, have a response uh, code of 200. So what I'm trying to say is, get me those, only display me only those packets, which have brought some HTTP data along with them, so that we want to see the contents of it. So I typed is equal, double is equal to 200 and I hit enter. So now you can see the display has filtered uh, only those uh, HTTP packets, which has come from the server. So 202, 65, 141, 245 is the IP address of MGAT server and dot uh, 9, 10.9 is the IP address of my machine. So you can see that uh, uh, only those packets which have come from the server uh, and are carrying some data in it. And you can see they are carrying, most of them are carrying images, JPEG, PNG images and different formats. So based on the filter that we have set, it has listed all those packets. So let's try to pick up one packet. So let's say, let me filter it. Let's filter it based on the length of the packet that is there. So I clicked on the length button. So you can see, uh, basically, uh, there are uh, packets which are of uh, larger length. So let's say, let's get into, let's pick up one of those uh, packets here. So when I click this packet, you can see that it is carrying, uh, I mean, all the header details inside that particular packet or the frame are listed here. And uh, we can also see that uh, okay it has http header it has tcp header tcp header when when right now tcp header yeah when i click tcp header you can see in the third pane uh, probably this area you can see that this area has been highlighted i'll click it again so you can see that it is showing that that portion of the packet is having tcp header so likewise when i click ip again it is saying that that portion of the packet has uh, ip header in it and likewise, uh, if I click, it is we know that it is carrying a JPEG image in it. So when I click the JPEG uh, uh, the header here or JPEG entry here, you can see it has highlighted that this portion. Let me just uh, expand this. Yeah, I'm just expanding it further so that we'll have a broader view. Right. So it is saying that all these uh, things that are highlighted here, I'll click JPEG again. So it is saying that this is, is the data that is being uh, transferred inside this packet. So now uh, for us to analyze this, one good way is I will right click this JPEG and I'll say, I'll export that uh, highlighted area as bytes. So they're all hexadecimal values. So I'll export them. I'll save it onto the desktop and uh, I will basically, let's say, let's name it as uh, some, say, temp dot jpg. I'm saving it onto the desktop. Let's save it. Fine. Let's go back to the desktop now. So I'm minimizing this. Yeah. And we can see there is a temp dot jpg. Let's click on this. Let's open this. Yes. So now you can see 
this temp jpga is nothing but the uh, in fact that hexadecimal values are corresponding to this image that is uh, basically the title image of the website so what happened uh, when we brought this uh, when we requested for this page uh, this page was brought from the server and while it was bringing from the server each of those images are being carried in different packets for example this uh, let's go back to workshop again yeah this packet in fact is carrying the title image inside it and what does the hexadecimal corresponding uh, hexadecimal values corresponding to it and you can see the blue area that is there in the third frame those hexadecimal values are the values corresponding to the image what we did was we did a right click we did a export bytes of it on the desktop we saved it as temp right this gives you a good understanding about uh, the wireshark utility this is just the basic so as we go along as we keep doing more experiments we will keep unleashing the power of uh, wireshark so just summarizing uh, we just had a practical look of the wireshark and the basic features of the wireshark just summarizing what did you do in this video we generated network traffic through the browser we captured the network packets in wireshark and then we explored various options the display filter can take because there were so many packets that were captured we set the right filter and then we glanced over some selected packet headers uh, and then finally we interpreted the hexadecimal contents of a particular packet and we it made sense that it was carrying a jpeg image when we saved it on the desktop uh, we were able to open it with some other application and we were able to see the uh, image okay and finally here are the references one the best reference is the wireshark's website and then there are a few books like uh, kuros and uh, frozen in fact kuros uh, uses lots of uh, examples exercises uh, based on wireshark and then the marketing to the wireshark site that's a best source so here's the wireshark website let me just uh, zoom in further yeah, here's the website so you can see wireshark and then you have the download section you have the learn section and beyond that and when you click on the download section you have the installables over here you can see windows installables likewise mac likewise you have linux version and other versions as well and uh, you can see it is as new as uh, hardly 15 days back it shows how active it is and likewise you can get to the get help section there are lots of documentation there are lots of uh, details about uh, uh, the display filters that we saw so, so the various filters that are possible and all those details you can get it from this uh, site and then getting back to the presentation yeah that's it okay thank you see you in the next uh, video